Hello there, so today we will be looking at a cute list that I found on a random Discord server. And this list is titled uh, Seops Sucks and the Reason for Why People Quit, or something along the lines of that. And um, you can just watch me play TDM, or like watch TDM gameplay of me, and I'm just gonna go through this, and uh, yeah, we just gonna, you know, whatever this list says. So, I have not read through it, just so you know, I'm... This is my live reaction to it, essentially. So, first point says, When you shoot someone right before dying, it won't register, regardless of how much he ate. He'll eat, and then the guy spectating you says, React, you didn't shoot. Sometimes, also without dying, they will just eat four SA bursts and walk out like nothing happened. So, a lot of, it is, a lot of that is down to uh, servers and how they work, and the gameplay and how that works, and how these two things interact. Um... Something I want to say, first things first, I have obviously also experienced this, I think everyone that plays Seops around, you know, na any, anywhere between 2019 or like probably even 2018, 2017 and now knows this feeling. Um, mainly this is down to the fact that, um, you know, you can't really work servers in a mobile game the way you could in a PC game, right? Like, servers work of lower tick rate simply because devices are not made to withstand um, communicating to a server like hundreds of times a second like this this just doesn't happen right um, and there's probably gonna go like 10 15 years until this is able to happen on a mobile device right like this is just it's not critical force's fault this is simply how it works the only thing that critical force can do to adjust that is to work on the gameplay right like current gameplay is way too fast paced for the servers that we have or much rather the servers that we have will not in no world be able to consistently and for everyone equally without giving someone an advantage or disadvantage play with the gameplay um that is as fast paced as it is right that's just not going to happen so um something has to happen to the gameplay the time to kill that we have is way too low like you can just kill someone from body shots within with an orc in like what 200 milliseconds or something that's that's just absurd even for a pc game that would be like a lot right and we have that on a mobile game with uh, servers that just are not capable of doing that in any capacity and on top of that there is uh, obviously accuracy that you have to keep in mind because um pc games you know um there's no aim assist clearly um you have accuracy stats of like 20 30 percent on like good players very very good players can get to like 35 percent consistently consistently right but in seops we have people that play on 25 30 percent consistency and there is no skill connected to that it's it's purely your play style like you can you could get the biggest bot gold player that has no aim in the world and explain them like in in very small details how to play maps and they will get 35 plus percent uh accuracy stats so there's there, there needs to be skill connected to playing like that, and that's one of the main problems that we have in CO2 right now, and that also makes the servers and everything connected to that a lot more... Like, it makes it a lot more obvious that these things are just not possible to work in a mobile game. Point two, too many bugs and glitches. I read the rest of the point, I'm just going to focus on that for a second, right? Um, there's one thing people really, really misunderstand and miscategorize when it comes to, like bugs and glitches and how long it takes to for for those to be fixed right game development is a really difficult task like many things that are part of that process of like developing a game take a lot longer than you would expect them to that's point one point two is the community is not really supportive Devs have to do a lot of their own work in digging to find out bugs, find out what's going wrong in the game. There is very few bug reports from like really credible sources featuring recordings, featuring screenshots of the of the errors, featuring exact paths, what the people did in order to get to that point. And generally the community is more on the side of abusing the game or um, making a home for the people that do that as in, you know how the community treats hackers and how well received hacking still is like not for you as a player but there are many um, people in the competitive and content creation realm that collaborate with hackers not only to get their own accounts boosted but also just chill with these people if that was different or let's say it like that all these things were they different would take a lot of work away from the developers if bugs instead of showcasing them in youtube videos were privately told to the devs 
you know, things would be a lot easier. Devs could have like months of uh, time before these bugs actually turn game breaking because more people discover them. If you make a YouTube video about, for example, um, a broken spot on the map, right? If you make a YouTube video about that, immediately hundreds and thousands of people are going to know this spot. And if it's overpowered enough, they are going to abuse that right away, right? This means whatever the map team is doing at that point, someone or even all of them have to sit down and fix this spot that is causing problems, right? This in exchange takes time away from what they were actually doing, right? Because if there's no actual map being released or whatever happening, these people are still working, right? It's not like they're, they're just scratching the balls in the, in the office when there's not just something happening in the next patch notes, right? They are still working. And progress on their actual work is a lot slower when you have to keep dealing with weird ass shit. So this is what I wanted to say about the too many bugs and glitches. So your friends won't appear online when you don't change your service 17 times, you know? This is a thing, it's, it's a bug that I find all, that I also find weird, that I also experience a lot. Um, the easiest fix for that is just remove that, uh, remove that person from your friend list and add them again. They will usually just show up. That's like the best fix for that that I currently have for you, right? Next point. Shit economy system. You got to eco for like three rounds in a row to actually be able to full buy. This is straight up wrong or I don't see, let's say like that. I don't see where this is a problem. The point of an economy is that you have low tier uh, items, weapons, right? And then you have mid tier items, weapons, and then you have the high tier stuff, right? High tier is... Um, sniper ratio and everything and everything below that rifles is AK and everything below that and that's pretty much it then there's mid tier shotguns SMGs and then there's low tier which is pistols right so what you do is essentially you lose a round you see that you don't have money you get you go to you go for Nico you you buy basically nothing you you get maybe like a bit of utility if you're on the T side you get a bit of utility maybe attempt to get a plant or something if you're on the CT side you gamble stack one of the two bomb sites hope to maybe get an impact what you can also do is play hero AK simply afford a rifle for one person have them buy Kevlar and play around them that's usually something you do on T side. Um, there are many things you can do in this type of round and on top of that you then have that's the that's the first round right that, that also gives you like 1.4k something cash 1.8k depending on if you get the plant or not then you have a second round that round you either go for an eco again which is a shit idea for your ct but as a t you could theoretically do that but you can also go for force buy this means you buy smgs or generally weapons that give you more money because there's additional kill rewards on some guns there is the on the smgs for example there's a kill reward times two on shotguns there's a kill reward times two and there's one on the scout you buy that if you don't get kill if you don't get kills from that you will still have a bit of money left and you could probably do the same thing again next round if you get kills or a plant, you will just easily have to fool by the next round. This is how economy is meant to work. Like, I'm saddened by the fact that economy in this game has turned down to buying full, like buying rifles, buying sniper, or buying deagle armor. Like, it's like this is how simple economy in this game has become, right? Like, you you simply have to eco for one round. Then, like, semi-force buy for the second round, or just eco again, and you will have money for the next round. Even if you don't get plants, if you don't get kills. That's how economy works. That's already way too generous of the game. Like, the economy is shit in the way of favoring the player on paper, right? That, that's how it practically is currently. Like, pretending like it is the other way right now is simply wrong. Point four, enemy will kill you without you even seeing him or barely seeing his foot or arm. This is also largely based on the fact that peaking rules in this game work in a way where um, you just cannot be as close to the angles you peak. I also think that models, the models themselves are way too wide for the game. This means um, that you can like, you can spot, like you can shoulder peak or even pe fully peak angles without your head being exposed in any way, shape or form, right? You can kind of combat this as the guy that peaks by peaking the angle from further away and getting as far away from the corner as possible. This means you you, you swing, you you essentially are forced to wide swing in this game. That's, that's the easiest way of describing it, right? This is aspect one. Aspect two is movement is very fast and servers are very slow. These two things just don't match really well, and they they haven't for, for years now. This is 
problematic in two ways. In one way, you obviously have no guarantee that what you are seeing is also what the enemy is seeing. And issue number two, the things that happen on your screen have happened for the enemy on their screen for like, like 100, 200, 300, 400 milliseconds ago. Like, if an enemy stops moving on their screen, they will continue moving for a certain amount of time on your screen. This is simply based on how the servers work. This time frame is essentially your ping plus the enemy's ping plus one thirtieth of a second up to one thirtieth of a second times two, right? Which, which is the tick rate. You can get unlucky or lucky with that. So it's basically 260 milliseconds. If you're playing on decent ping, if you're playing on shit ping, you know, it's going to be more or less. Same thing for the enemy. If they're playing on decent or shit ping, it's going to be more or less, right? Um, so this is, this is issue two. And issue number three, which I haven't really mentioned before, that there's aim assist. It's really, really easy to simply hold an angle that is like way too tight to react to. And uh, aim assist just does everything for you and you simply have to react. Like the main difficulty with shooter games in, in the peaking sense is that you have to do many things at the same time. You In CSGO, for example, you have complicated movement type shit, right? You have either strafing, you have you have to counter strafe, you have to aim, you have to trace the guy that is already moving. You, you don't have to do any of that. In CSGO, you just sit down, wait for someone to peek, and as soon as he walks into your crosshair, you hold your shoot button down and you're good, right? There is no recoil, guns don't have any inaccuracy to them, or at least not sufficiently to the point where it would make a difference. This is just all not good, and this has been tried to be fixed with uh, crosshair smoothing, which the community was heavily against for reasons unexplained. Matchmaking sucks, Develop developers don't give a shit, all they do is make skins for their own wallet and money. This has, like, this whole point has two flaws to it. Number one, matchmaking sucks. In in what, in what extent, to what extent does matchmaking suck? To, like, what do you mean by that? Like, I can see matchmaking being unbalanced, but that is mainly due to the point that a lot of things in this game depend on luck. A bad player can be a lot higher ranked than a good player by being lucky more frequently. So let, let's use Diamond 1 and Diamond 4, right? I think that in Diamond the gap's relatively big, right? You have people that are almost master versus people that are almost platinum. Like I think that that difference is relatively big, right? So you have someone that is almost platinum and you have someone that is almost master right one of these people is lucky and the other one is not the two positions master one uh, diamond one diamond four can be interchanged right this this happens right you can derank sufficiently because you get unlucky with hackers with uh just shit teammates all of that right that's the only way in which matchmaking sucks makes a difference in within this context of people leaving like i would say personally this is mainly down to um the game not being skill based like there's a lot of things that depend on luck depend on external factors dependent on aim assist that can favor someone without that being a skill based operation right like aim assist can favor you without that requiring more skill of you to do so versus someone else like you can be an, ama an amazing player but if you don't know how to abuse aim assist you will just not get far in suit like you will just stop winning games at master four or lower spec ops tiers right that's simply how it is devil lobes don't give a shit all they do is make skins for their own wallet and money this whole thing makes no sense because developers that make skins are completely separate from developers that design the game and developers that design maps developers that work in marketing developers that work in esports they're completely separate teams like the skins and events are made by wholly different people than the rest of the game right even if the entire game design department was to catch COVID tomorrow and be in quarantine and not able to work, nothing would happen to the skin output that the game would have. Like, these two things are just not connected to each other. And developers don't give a shit is wrong. Um, I would agree that some devs care more about the game than others, but I would also say the ones that do really care about the game are really trying to improve things and they are not being helped by the community because posts like this are just cluttered with toxic feedback that just doesn't help anyone simply talk to devs Most, a ton of devs have their dms open they interact with the community a lot just go there make valid statements that are actually true right give them proof that things that you do are this way and they will try their best to explain to you why things cannot be or that things are already in the works or many of these things that game garbage toxic community that is Without knowing who wrote this, just from the phrasing alone, I would say that person is part of it. The game itself is also boring and extremely glitchy and buggy, and regardless of anything, the game will end up making you c 
in real time after playing it, especially solo queue. So starting off with the game is boring. I would agree to a, to a, to a degree where I would say it's pretty easy to hit a skill ceiling where you cannot improve anymore. Like, like in a game that is good, like for me right now, for example, Apex Legends, I've been playing it a lot, right? Um, I get online and I learn new things. I get online and I notice myself getting better with more and more time that I'm playing. Um, these things don't happen in Seops because there's very few resources given to the player that would actually end up making a difference. Or in other words, the game rules that we have are not clear cut and smooth. The game rules that we have simply work in a way where you have something that on paper you're meant to do, but if you don't do it, who cares, right? Example number one, running accuracy, right? On paper, you are supposed to stop moving. Practically, you're probably still having a decent chance of hitting the other guy if you just keep running, right? That's probably the simply, simplest way of explaining this. Extremely glitchy. I think uh, extremely glitchy and buggy. I think I've kind of explained why this is, you know, in case you don't know, <laughs> game design is not as easy as you think. The developers are useless, as I said before, they don't care about the game. It's all for their own interest, unlike developers from other games. Um, primarily, the people that care about how profitable the game is are not connected to the people that develop it. The people that develop it have their consistent salary. Like, no matter if the game is doing good or bad, unless they get fired, they're making the same money. Like, that doesn't really matter. The people that are up there, like... Very few of those are actually known in the community, and that's probably good this way. But practically, they care about profits because it's their job. It, they are they are not game designers, or most of them aren't at least. They are they are, they do marketing. They are simply business people. All they focus on is profits, right? That's that's literally their job. That's their job description. And the more profit the game makes, the more financial resources are available to the company that develops it, right? If the game is making good good amounts of money, um, they can sign new people for tasks that are currently just understaffed, right? I think that's the easiest way of saying that. So it should be in your best interest that the game is making as much money as possible, as long as that does not impact gameplay, which currently it doesn't. And also, I would not say that developers are useless, you know, that's just my personal view on that. The cosmetic in-game items are way too expensive for the average player, and case and spins are absolutely rigged aiming on draining your wallet only. Huh? So, firstly, cosmetic in-game items are way too expensive. Have you played any other game on mobile? Ha have you played any other game, right? Um, critical Ops, firstly, the only properly big mobile game where you can access the primary uh, currency without spending money. You can get 60 credits per day by watching ads. Just that alone. Ign ignoring the offers because many people don't like to do that stuff. But just ads. 60 credits per day. 1,400 credits are $10. This gives you $10 worth of credits in not even 24 days. This is a lot of money to give to people for free. And I think that it is, like on paper, like practically, it is way too generous to be giving away this amount. Considering that, 1,400 credits being $10, being 24 days worth of watching ads, I don't think that, like, if if that is your, your ceiling of, like, how much stuff you can get for free, I don't think that any of the items are too expensive. Case and spins are absolutely rigged, aiming on draining a wallet only. No. All of this works on chances. You have the chances. By law in Europe, you have to have chances when you have loot boxes or anything like that, lucky spins, right? You have to have the odds there. And having these odds not match up reality is highly fucking illegal. If you don't understand these odds, that, that's not the fault of the people that put them there and the lucky spins that are designed after them, the cases that are designed after them. The odds are more than fair if you compare them to... Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, for example, where items are even more expensive and it's even less likely to get them, right? Like, you have to you have to compare that to other games. Developers won't add any new content. Huh? Developers won't add any new content than they currently have, making this game garbage and boring and making people quit it and switch to better games like Codem or PUBG. If... If Codem or PUBG suit you better within 
their politics of releasing content then switch to these games, right? It, you, nobody forces you to play Sea of Thieves. It's a game that the devs design in a way where they see fit. And if you like that, you can be here. If you don't like that, you can fuck off, right? That's that's your decision. I wouldn't. I also also I wouldn't say that like. How many events did we have last year with unique lucky spins, unique critical passes, unique themes, unique maps, unique game modes? How many how many of these did we have uh, last year? Like ten or something? Like there's almost there's almost monthly coming out one big update with new items that you can get for free, as I just mentioned, with new maps, new game modes to play. I don't think that any of that uh, fits the description won't add any new content like i think that that is just straight up wrong and in case you were meant to say like yeah there's not much content for competitive competitive does not live off content competitive lives off a consistent experience which i will admit is not currently there in seops but it also doesn't fit the description of the devs don't add any new content for competitive because as i just as i just said this is just not how competitive works while in the meantime the game that you're comparing that to pubg mobile for example I, I don't get how you can you can look at Seops and PUBG, like ignoring the gameplay and ignoring the comp scene, ignoring these two aspects for now. Simply looking at content that is made for casual players to buy. I don't see how you can look at a game that offers pay to win items for a fuck ton of money and go like, yeah, that is better than the guys that give you like 10 bucks worth of credits for free every month. Yeah, no, 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 I'm just going to stick to PUBG. Next point. Oh, it's the last one. This game is all about being lucky and run and gun headshotting. If you're unlucky, don't try this rigged game or you will end up yourself from this Eastern Iran. Well, um, I already looked at the run and gun aspect. I already looked at the lucky aspect. Um, I find rigged game is interesting wording for something like that because rigged, the word rigged implies that it's designed to favor like one specific part of their demographic of their uh, usership right that that's what rigged implies and that's just not how code works like is is the code is the game meant to look at your account and go oh no that's this guy no 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 we we're not giving him the luck of hitting people with a headshot no 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 fuck that the ops one taps him every time yeah the second he joins this public, this ops specifically is going to headshot him every time. Like, how do you expect code to work? Yeah, I think, is there anything else I need to say about that? Like, um, this is about as uh, unconstructive, like as destructive as criticism gets. I don't think that any of this is of use to literally fucking anybody. Um, like... I, I am no person to complain about the way criticism is presented because everything I do on YouTube is criticism on one side, but also on the other side meant to be entertainment. If this text was meant to be that, meant to be made for entertainment, I would really appreciate in case the person that wrote this is seeing this, please just leave this same list with, you know, constructive criticism in the comments in case there is any. Um, yeah, I think that's about everything I wanted to say and uh, yeah, see ya.